Today's federal debt is the sum of all of our annual budget deficits and surpluses going back to the beginning of our federal government. Our war for independence created much of our early debt, and by March 4, 1789, the first day of our federal government, our national debt was $75 million, which was about 40% of our economy. This terrified our founding fathers, and they acted quickly to pay it down. We didn't stay there for long. The Civil War not only had a huge human cost, it brought the United States to the brink of bankruptcy. However, like before, we paid our debt down quickly. In 1913, the Federal Reserve System was created to help manage the nation's money supply and to oversee national banks. That year was also the birth of the modern income tax. World War I was supposed to be the war to end all wars. Several years later, the Great Depression brought with it extreme economic hardship for millions of Americans. This social security measure gives at least some protection to 30 millions of our citizens. It is insurance that you and your employer have bought and paid for. World War II was a time of sacrifice, and while the government took on unprecedented levels of debt, Americans bought savings bonds to finance our winning the war. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Humphrey Bogart. Our fighting men have just won history's greatest victory for freedom. Buy bonds for their future and for your own future. We've got another bond to buy. It's official. It's all over. It's total victory. The large military and social spending practices of the 1960s and 70s were two key factors that led to a major economic downturn by the end of the 1970s. The 1980s saw the rise of supply-side economics. It's morning again in America. Reaganomics. You're uh, the trickle-down theory guy. I'm betting my reputation on it. The controversial Laffer curve proposed that lower marginal tax rates would eventually generate higher tax revenues. The theory did have its critics. Let me just give you a difference that I have with Governor Reagan on taxes. It is what I call a voodoo economic policy. For decades, we have piled deficit upon deficit, mortgaging our future and our children's future for the temporary convenience of the present. Read my lips. The debate over supply-side economics continues to this day. But what is not debatable is that the federal debt exploded in the 1980s. A fundamental shift had occurred. America was becoming addicted to debt. Never before in our history had so much debt been created during an era of relative peace and prosperity. Yes, the Cold War ended, but it came at an extremely high price and people from across the political spectrum were becoming very alarmed. 